everybody for coming out tonight to Old Jerk Cellars for our Virtual Vines. Uh, yes. This is our third edition. Third it? edition. Third edition of yes. Virtual Vines. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight and joining us. Uh, I want special thanks out to Rob over there for giving us the music for yes. tonight and stuff. Thank Very you. good. I'm good. And another special thanks out to Jonas uh, from 55 Main Street for uh, supplying us with the food for tonight. Yes. Uh, big hands out to Jonas for tonight, too. So, and we will be continuing this in 2014. Our next Virtual Vines event is going to be on January 30th. And we're going to be tasting the 2012 Syrah and the 2012 Vidal Blanc. So make sure you get, everybody gets signed up for that. Mm -hmm. And the food for that night will be? From Costanera. Very which is good. actually a Peruvian restaurant in Montclair. Very good. So everybody, make sure you get signed up for that. Make sure you come out and participate. Anybody that's from, you're from out in Baltimore, you said? So definitely make sure you get your wine. Take and it join on us down online. With you and join us. We'll have a menu uh, set up for different pairings and stuff like that. So you can actually join us and join us like the people who are at, you know, Kathy, who's uh, been blogging in tonight with questions for on tonight. On Facebook, Twitter. Yep. You can send us questions, comments, let us know what you're eating, drinking, everything. Send us pictures, we'll post them back up. We did that with the last one, that yep. people were doing mm -hmm. their own menus at home and, yeah. and participating with us. Yeah, because we love hearing time. what people are pairing the wines with, you know, beyond what we're pairing them with. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. exactly. All right, so I guess we'll get started. Again, thank you again for joining us. We're going to be tasting our 2012 Malbec tonight and our 2012 Sweet Riesling. So I guess we can go ahead and start with the Malbec. So Scott, if you'd like to talk a little bit about the Malbec. And um, again, for the second time, we're going around with the wines. Uh, we're talking about the fermentations. We're talking about how we did them. Again, we did a 17-day fermentation on the skins with this. What it means is when we're doing the fermentation on the skins is we have the juice, we have the skins. Everything is in the tank. We run through a crusher destemmer, take the st stems off the grapes, and put them into a tank. What we do is we start the fermentation process on the skins because the juice in a red grape is clear. Uh, so you get all your color, all your tannins, all your characteristics come from the skins. So we'll start the fermentation on the skins during fermentation. What we do is we do a pump over and a punch down. We pump over the juice from the bottom and bring it back over to the top and we keep everything saturated so it, we can extract as much color as possible. Uh, so for 17 days, is, we did this twice to three times a day, uh, doing this once in the morning, at lunchtime, and then in the afternoon before we go home. Uh, we'll do these pump overs. So with the Malbec grape, it was a little bit young coming in. It was a little bit on the lighter side, not mm -hmm. quite as sweet as uh, what we were looking. So the alcohol on this one is about 12%. So it's a little bit not like your big bodied reds that yeah, have a lot nice of alcohol medium bodied, yeah. characteristic to it. So with them being a little bit on the younger side, what I did is I bumped up the temperatures on the fermentation. Um, all of our tanks are jacketed, so I'm able to moderate the temperature that's on them. So I kept the fermentation at about 65 to 70 degrees on these. Where once we get into the reason, I'll talk about the different characteristics with the you know fermentation on those. But with a little bit hotter fermentation, what it does is it gets a little bit more color extraction, and you're able to you know get a little bit more darker characteristics yep. to it, extract it a little bit. The grapes come in, they're almost like a very dark, almost black characteristic to them. And as you're doing the punch downs, and every day you extract a little bit more of the color out of them, you'll see the grapes actually turn to more like a, a lighter, you know, purple color. You see, you know, you're act actually getting the extraction of the color out of the skins. So if uh, anybody's got their wines, if anybody's got them all back and stuff, um, you can pour yourself a glass of it now. And actually, um, hold it up you know, to something. Yeah, hold it up to something. We have a white tablecloth here. White um, piece of paper. Yeah, white piece of paper. We really we get to see the color. Like to look at the color. It's got a very dark char characteristic to it, almost like a garnet. Very, very yes, very much so. You know, very good colors to it and stuff. And that's what you're looking for in your red wines. Very good color to them. You know, even nice though that they're color. dark, but you can see how clean it is. Mm -hmm. um, these are ran through a sterile filter, so there's no problems with them but you'll actually still get you know, a very good color out of them, and uh, it's a very clean wine. So we'll talk a little bit about the nose, the sort of the flavor profile, um, what we're sort of uh, smelling and tasting in the wine. One of the nice uh, sort of examples that you gave was, was a little bit of tea, mm -hmm. a little bit of raisin, yeah. some clove. I really get all, I get all of that in there. Yeah, pull up a little bit of the tea right on the nose, right at the beginning. 
-hmm. And then right in the beginning of the palate, right on the front of your palate, I pull up the raisins. And then once it gets back to the back of the palate, that's where I pull up a little bit more of the clove characteristics to it. And again, this is a very smooth, a nice medium bodied red. And we chose to do this wine in this tasting because this is, we, we consider this sort of our Thanksgiving edition. And one of the reasons that we chose the Malbec is because we think that it's a nice sort of medium bodied red that pairs well with sort of the variety of dishes that you'll have at Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's what we talked about before. You know, any type of big family events, whether it's yeah. Thanksgiving or family reunions, anything where everybody's got, you know, 20 different types of food that's on the tables. And you're trying to make a pairing with, yeah. you know, everything. You're trying to limit maybe only having two or three different types of wine. This is one of them that you could put on the table. Absolutely. And it's going to pair with the majority of the stuff that's on the table. And we asked Jonas um, from 55 Main to do sort of his take on a Thanksgiving dish. And so for us tonight, he paired the Malbec with a roasted turkey salad, which has apples, dried cranberries, and uh, garlic aioli. And I think that it's a sort of a wink and a nod to turkey, but I think that it has all the elements, the cranberries, the turkey, and this Malbec it just paired beautifully it, with that. It pairs very well. It with picked that. up a little bit on the cranberries, and even though turkey is considered, you know, white meat, I think the the body of the meat and with the medium bodied yeah, wine. Even is the, yeah, the goat cheese went very well with it as and well. And he also too. did a, a bruschetta which had a little bit of goat cheese, some caramelized onions and tomatoes, and again it was a perfect match with that. Complements it very well, and with this only being released a week ago, it just yeah. I can't wait for another six months um, to see how it's going to more be a it's little bit more open complete and blossom. Wine. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. going to be a little bit more rounded edges to it. Um, right now, it's a little bit more up front. It'll get a little bit softer and it'll be a little bit deeper in characteristics. So, just a little sort of background on Malbec. A lot of people know of Malbec from Argentina as a single varietal wine. Um, it actually has its origins in France where it's one of the five grapes used in Bordeaux blends, and it made its way to South America, where it sort of it, it grew and flourished on its own, and so now you're seeing a lot of single varietal Malbecs from Argentina, and they're usually very reasonably priced, very good quality, and again, sort of a, a very versatile food wine that will pair well and with lots of different And things. they're starting to take over, it's sort of like the, the the go-to red? The go-to red. Yeah. It was always, you know, everybody knows Cabernet, everybody knows Merlot. Well, Malbec is sneaking up and it's going to take over. Yeah, because I think a lot of people have a tendency to maybe go right to like a Pinot Noir if they're not exactly sure. And I think Malbecs are a really nice sort of fill-in as well instead of just a, your, yeah. your typical Something a little Pinot. bit fuller. Mm -hmm. Something has got a little yeah. bit more character to it. So some other things, again, we had some great stuff paired with it tonight. Um, we had a, a, an amazing chocolate pairing tonight with this, where I, I have every intention of having some more later. But we actually had a dark chocolate with um, some cinnamon and a little bit of pumpkin and seed that was on from, the top. And that was from Lori's from chocolates. From Lori's chocolates. In and it paired beautifully. You know, you're not exactly sure, you know, you kind of try to pick up some elements in the wines when you're doing the pairings, but this is just absolutely a perfect pairing. Yeah. And some other things that you can pair Malbec with beyond sort of your Thanksgiving is uh, some leaner um, red meats, beef tenderloin, things like that, um, uh, grilled pork chops, certain well pasta dishes too, I think it would go really nicely mm -hmm. with. Something that's got a little bit a of lighter, lighter tomato, sauces. A lighter yep. tomato sauce, things like that, absolutely. So I guess we can move on to the Riesling. Mm -hmm. We can go over to the Riesling. So this is our 2012 Sweet Riesling, and we picked the, this Riesling in particular because, again, we think that this is a perfect sort of partner with Thanksgiving. If some you have guests that like something a little bit sweeter, I think this mm -hmm. will pair nicely with some of the lighter elements of it and then obviously go perfectly into dessert. Yeah, you always want a couple different styles to it. You know, People don't always have the dry red characteristic to it. You have people who like the lighter side, a little bit something a little bit sweeter, but not overly sweet. And that's what this Riesling sort of represents. Yes. Um, you know, it has sweet Riesling on the label, but it's actually more considered an off I'll dry um, style. It's about 3% residual sugar um, to it. So it doesn't have that real sweet characteristic to it. It has a little bit more of a cleaner palate to it. I think it has the perfect amount of sweetness in mm -hmm. my opinion. Because of the nice acidity that sort of it goes all the way through the wine, I think this has the perfect amount of And this sort of talking about the fermentations compared to the Malbec where it was up about 65 to 70 degrees on the fermentation, the Riesling was down to about 50 to 55 degrees on the fermentation. What it does is it keeps the fermentation going about two, two and a half weeks, nice and slow fermentation. 
because if you let a fermentation just go wild, what it'll do is it'll just build up too much heat. And all that heat coming out of the top, that's all your flavors, that's all your characteristics. It'll almost look like a boiling pot of water if you look in the top of the tank. So what you do is when you keep at it going. At that moment, Scott slow, panics. Yeah, at that moment. <laughs> uh, so that's why we have all our tanks are all jacketed. That way then I can keep the temperature on to them. I can keep a nice cooler fermentation where the other ones I'm heating up, this one here, what I'm doing is I'm trying to um, get it cooled down. So what I'll do is I'll try and get it nice and cool, about 50, 55 degrees. What it does, it keeps all those flavors and all those characteristics inside of it. Um, this one here actually has a little bit more alcohol than the Malbec, um, about 13%. But actually, because of the, this little bit of the sweetness yeah. and the acidity, you don't even notice it. Nope. So it just makes a nice, smoother characteristic to it. Um, pH is a little bit high on this one, and uh, TA is a little bit low. So that's why it's you only about 3%. tell everybody what all those things stand well, for. The, well, the pH, the pH in a wine, um, if you have a, you know something that has a lot of total acidity, which Rieslings are sort of known for, it's sort of that um, acid characteristic to it that we're known for. And that's why they'll have that green apple, very Granny Smith sort of characteristic to it. Something that's a little bit softer in the acids, like your reds, um, or like even a Chardonnay. Chardonnays have that uh, sort of buttery characteristic to it because they don't have a lot of acid into them, or you put them through a malactic fermentation. The Rieslings, we don't put it through a malactic fermentation, that way then you keep some of the acidity in there. You so it the keeps Christmas. it very, yeah, you need that crisp characteristic to it, so it finishes very clean on your palate. And you're able to pair it well with like your spicier foods and stuff like that, sort yep. of what we have tonight. Tonight we did a Thai chicken just to show how it goes with your Thai food, your Asian food, things that have a little bit more heat. So we did do a Thai chicken um, pot sticker, which has a, a sweet chili sauce, which mm -hmm. I think is a perfect example of um, what to pair with a Riesling. Yeah. Anything with like a little bit of spiciness is perfect, but it also... And it pairs very well also with those pumpkin ravioli. With pumpkin ravioli. And, and the nice, well I think the thing that's really great um, with the... Oh, we do have a question. Is them all back in the Australian regional wine? Uh, no, no, <laughs> actually, no. We went not a whole lot of yeah. Malbec in uh, Australia that I know of. Uh, not, uh, I'm sure they probably grow start. some there, but you don't see that one as much. They do do a lot of French varietals, but you see more Grenache Syrah from uh, mm -hmm. or from Australia yeah. as opposed to the Malbec. Yeah, it's sort of like a, we were talking about before, where Argentina is sort of more or less taking over the Malbec effect of everything, mm -hmm. and it's the yeah. wine is going to be the new up and coming if it if it's not already. Yeah which originated in France, actually. We did have one other question, too, from Wine Compass. He was asking where the grapes from both wines are sourced from. Um, they are, uh, we do have a little bit of them from here, and I also do bring them, uh, some of them in from uh, off the coast, uh, but a lot of them are all from the east coast here. They are very good. The uh, Riesling grows Riesling beautifully old, in yeah, this area Riesling's of the country. Riesling very good from up here. That's uh, a lot of that's from uh, New York. Finger Lakes. So we'll talk a little bit about the, the color again. If you want to pick up the Riesling and just sort of take a look at it, it has a really, really nice sort of golden hue to it, which I think is very typical of Riesling. Very nice and clear. You can see right through it on the nose, whereas we were talking about earlier, and it's just mm -hmm. even gotten better as it's sitting in the glass. A lot of that apple-y character, and again, yeah. like you were saying, yeah. More towards the red apple as opposed to the green apple. Yeah, sort of on that verge of a red apple to a mm -hmm. pear sort of style. A little bit softer because it doesn't have that acidity that we, were, we talked about before. Yep. But still, when you taste it, it finishes so nice and clean. And it really, that's what makes it so beautiful with food, even though it does have a little bit of sugar in it, is that it does finish so clean that it will pair perfectly with food. Yeah, if you have something that's really sweet, too overly sweet, it's, it makes it more difficult to try and do food pairings with them. Uh, you're very limited on the amount of foods that you can pair with it. That's sort of why I only do about a 3% residual sugar because I'm a big foodie person myself. I like to go out to restaurants, yeah. I like to do things like this um, you know, with Jonas and stuff. You know, in our other chef events, uh, with all our other chef events that are coming up, we have another one coming up this weekend, right? On Sunday, yeah, with Bluefish. Yeah, that'd be a great time. So the, the sweet Riesling, like Scott was saying, with the acid in it, allows it to pair really nicely with things that are a little bit richer. So we have it with a pumpkin ravioli tonight, which has a brown butter sauce. And so the, the acid in the Riesling really helps to sort of cut through that, the, the, the fattiness of something like a brown butter sauce. 
which again, one of our favorite things to pair our sweet Riesling with is cheesecake. Very similar, it's very rich mm -hmm. um, with the cheesecake and this Riesling, you get a little bit of the sweetness, but that acid yeah, that's really always balances the, it. That's always the sort of go-to dessert with Rieslings is, is the uh, cheesecake. It would be really great with something with vanilla ice cream as well too, maybe mm -hmm. on Thanksgiving. A little pumpkin pie a la mode. Very good. <laughs> so you wanna talk a little bit about um, how you made the Riesling? Um, again, we, uh, we did a little bit cooler fermentation. Um, the yeast that I use is an R2. Um, very happy with that yeast. I use that with the Riesling and the dry Riesling as well. Mm -hmm. um, I do that with, and also our Pinot. Um, our Pinot is a very big hit as well. What that sort of yeast does is it gives it that acidity characteristics to it. It gives it that apple character to it. I talked earlier about going through like a Sears catalog for Christmas and looking at a whole bunch of different characters of yeasts and different yeasts will give you more floral notes, some of them will give you more apple notes, some of them will extract more tannins from you know your red, some of them will give you that blackberry, that currant characteristics to it. So you'll sort of just go through a catalog of yeast and this R2 that I found, mm, geez, 2009 I found it um, with our first vintage and I've loved it ever since. It seems to be very delicate, the Riesling, so I would imagine you want to sort of protect all that sort of delicate, f you know, aromas and flavors in it. Yeah, it, it just gives it a good characteristic to it. Um, again, I try and keep a good pool, cool fermentation to keep all those good characteristics into it. I try not to heat it up too much to lose any of that. Um, and then I rack it off the, the dead yeast very quickly so I get rid of those characteristics to it and keep everything nice and fresh. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. And again, these are, you know, two of the wines that we have here at the winery that we think are great for Thanksgiving, but I think, you know, some of the other reds that we have would be nicely, nice as well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so this is why we've chosen the 2012 Sweet Riesling and the 2012 Malbec for this, this, this virtual vines in particular. But you can join us in January, on January 30th, for the next one. And we're going to be doing the 2012 Syrah and the 2012 Vidal Blanc. Vidal Blanc. So and the Vidal any, Blanc is very interesting, too, because a lot of people aren't familiar with that variety. Yeah, the so. Vidal Blanc is a French-American hybrid, and it comes off. It's just got such a nice characteristic to it. It's such a more universal wine than anybody can even imagine. So I will take like a, a real quick minute to talk a little bit about some of the other events we have coming up here in December. Can you believe it's like almost December? <laughs> So prior to our next Virtual Vines event in January, we are going to be doing some things here at the winery. We have a holiday wine and music on um, December 14th, um, and we're going to have music, food, wine, and we're going to be doing some custom labels for the evening. So if people have last minute gifts, they can get those that night. We're going Santa's coming back to the tasting room nice. again. Nice, and our elf. Yeah, Santa and his Good. elf are coming back to the tasting room. Santa always loves coming to Old York Cellars. So he, <laughs> Santa will be here December 14th and 15th and 21st and 22nd. He's making two stops to the winery oh, this good. year. So yes, come with the kids. It's fun for all. Picture with Santa, do a wine tasting. And bring a food pantry item. Oh yeah, we're in, and bring a food pantry item. If you bring in your items for the Flemington Food Pantry, you can get a dollar off your tasting. Very good. And, uh, and again, our January 30th. January 30th so is our next virtual vines. If lines. anybody has any questions about the Shiraz or the Vidal, get them in to us. We'll try and make sure that we get them answered uh, when we're doing our broadcast. And you can send us questions even after we're done with the broadcast. We will be checking uh, it on Twitter, and it's hashtag virtual vines. You can post anything on Facebook. We'll find it there as well. If you have any questions or as you're going through your tasting tonight, you want to send us any questions, comments, you can send them to hashtag virtual vines or Facebook. Um, old, old York Sellers, and we're on Twitter at Old York Sellers. So uh, once again, thank you guys for joining us on our third installment of Virtual Vines. Can you believe we've done this three times? Yeah, it's getting better. <laughs> and thanks and again, thank and we hope you guys out. will all come back and see us too. <laughs> Cheers.